let's find the differential of volume for spherical coordinates, okay? So imagine I wanted to do an integral using spherical coordinates, a triple integral. I would need to include some fun over some volume of some function of x, y, z times dv. So if I want to do this in spherical coordinates, I need to find an expression for dv. And as, you have, as I have shown you in the previous video, dv is simply the absolute value of the Jacobian determinant of x, y, z with respect to u, v, w times the u times dv times dw, okay? So let's assume that our three new variables, u, v, and w, are the three new variables in spherical coordinates, r, phi, and theta, okay? Those are the three variables in spherical coordinates. And you know from previous chapters that the way to calculate x, y, z from those three variables is by doing this, these equations here, right? And this is always given in a table in the exam. So how to find dv? We need to find the Jacobian matrix, then find its determinant. So let's calculate the Jacobian matrix, okay? So the Jacobian matrix is going to be a matrix that has du with respect to d rho, du with respect to d phi, du with respect to d theta. Sorry, when I said u, I should have written x. Yeah. How do you remember what goes up and what goes down? Actually, the notation tells you. So on the top we have x, y, or z, and on the bottom we have u, v, and w. In our case, u, v, and w play the role of r, phi, and theta, okay? So the next row will be partial of y with respect to rho, partial of y with respect to phi, partial of y with respect to theta, and the final row will be partial of z with respect to rho, partial of z with respect to phi, partial of z with respect to theta. Okay, so now it's time to calculate partial derivatives. So if we calculate them one by one, remember, you have the expressions for x, y, and z here. So the result is as follows. Let me write it quickly. Okay, these are the nine partial derivatives. So now we need to calculate the determinant, which is quite ugly, but we can use, for example, I could use this row to expand the determinant. So I can do this times this determinant plus this times this determinant, right? Using this row. So I get minus r sine theta and of course I forgot an r squared here Okay, so if you actually um, develop this expression by combining terms, cancelling terms out, and using the fact that cosine squared plus sine squared equals one, you can relatively, easy, relatively easily arrive at minus r squared 
times sine theta. Okay? So that is the determinant of the Jacobian. Okay? But we actually want to calculate the absolute value of that. Okay? So we want to calculate the absolute value of that, the absolute value of that. So our result is r squared sine theta. And therefore, we know that dv is applying the general equation is simply r squared sine theta times dr times d theta times d phi. That is our differential of volume for spherical coordinates. Okay? So this was the method using the Jacobian. We could also have used the method of using geometrical intuition. But this time it's a bit trickier because you have three coordinates, so it's not easy neither to draw it nor to imagine it. However, here I did an attempt of drawing it in Mathematica. So if you fix a certain radius and you increase the radius by dr, then you fix a certain angle theta, which is the angle with respect to the z-axis, okay? This is the angle theta. And you increase it by d theta. So this means that you are moving this amount, which is r times d theta. And also you fix a, a certain angle phi. And remember that phi is the angle around the z-axis. Yeah? And you increase it by an amount d phi. So then you create an arc whose length is equal to this radius multiplied times d phi. But this radius is not r, because r is from the origin to this point. While this radius is from the z-axis to this point. So this radius is r times sine of theta. So doing some trigonometry, you end up with this cuboid that has dr as one side, r d theta as one side, and r sine theta d phi as the other side. So when you calculate the volume by multiplying this times this times this, you arrive at this. Okay? So it matches. So that was the second method of calculating dv using geometrical intuition. In this case, I wouldn't recommend it. And finally, you have the third and most useful method, which is look it up. So in the list of equations in the exam, I provide this table here. So you can look up coordinate system, volume element. So spherical coordinates, this is the volume element for spherical coordinates. R squared sine theta, dr, d phi, d theta. Okay, so in practice, whenever you are doing problems, just go and look it up on the table. These are used so commonly that it's the easiest way. Just look it up on the table. Okay, so thank you very much. See you in the next video.